Today we're taking a look at my favourite astrophotography lens, it's the mighty Samyang 135 f2. Hey folks, my name's Steve and welcome to Scotia Astro. I wanted to share my thoughts today on a fantastic lens for astrophotography that can be used on traditional DSLRs or dedicated astro cameras. This isn't a new lens, but I use it in a slightly different way to some astrophotographers, so I thought you might like to see how I pair it with this custom rig. I use other great lenses from astrophotography projects like the Samyang 14mm f2.8 along with the 85mm f1.4 and the Sigma 24 1.4, but for wide field deep sky targets the 135 is hard to beat. I've been really impressed with the quality of my Samyang lenses and my copies have been all mechanically excellent and tack sharp. The Samyang or Rokinon as it's known in other parts of the world is a fast 135mm f2 lens that's compatible with a range of mount types from Canon, Sony, Nikon and many more. I use the Canon EF compatible version as it's the best fit on my dedicated astro cameras which I'll cover later in the video. In terms of physical specs, the Samyang 135 weighs in at around 800 grams and is just under 15 centimeters long. It's a manual focus lens but don't let that put you off as being able to focus manually is a great benefit, especially in astrophotography where precise focus is crucial for clear images. But as you'll see here with the attached ZWO electronic autofocuser, I do have a wee cheat but I'll cover that in a bit. The aperture range of the lens goes from f2 right up to f22, but for astrophotography purposes I would never really venture above f4. For the vast majority of my images I stick to f2 or f2.8. The lens is actually made up of 11 separate lenses in 7 groups, some of which contain ED glass elements or extra low dispersion glass. This is particularly useful in maximising light transmission and providing great colour correction and minimising chromatic aberrations which can really affect faster lenses. You can find ED glass and other high-end astro products including telescopes and binoculars, so it's great to see it here included in this lens too. One of the best features of the lens though is the price. This is a complete steal, especially given the quality of astro images you can get out of this lens. You can grab the Samyang 135 f2 here in the UK for under £500 and I'll list prices in some other countries here too. A subtle but very important feature when it comes to astrophotography is the lens hood. You'll see here that this one's totally flat at the top, so what's the big deal with that? Who cares? Well, astrophotographers do especially when it comes to taking your flat calibration frames. I typically use one of these LED light panels and with the Samyang's lens hood it sits flush and it means no light spillage. You'll see here that the lens hood for my Samyang 14mm is curved so it'd be impossible to sit an LED panel on top of this. Good flat frames are an essential part of post-processing and they remove dust spots and vignetting from your images amongst other things so this lens hood's a real saviour. I'll have links to all the gear that I mentioned here down in the description below so you can go check that out if you want to pick up anything for yourself. Shooting at 135mm is so much fun, especially for big and bright nebulae and other large galaxies like Andromeda. I love the framing options that you have at this focal length and when you bring the fast f2 focal ratio of the Samyang into play it really is a winning combination. Stick around until the end of the video and I'll share some images that I've taken with this wee rig over the years. If you want to follow my astrophotography adventures from here in the UK then please consider subscribing and hit the bell notification below so you don't miss out on any of my future uploads. Thanks very much for your support, it really helps my channel to grow. By shooting at fast focal ratios of f2 and f2.8 the Samyang can suck light into the camera's sensor and you can grab a great amount of detail even in shorter imaging sessions. I call it my mini rasa. By pairing this lens with a dedicated astro camera you can tease out even more details. Let's have a look now at some of the cameras I use with this lens. Depending on my target and how I want to frame it I switch between my two one shot colour dedicated astro cameras both from ZWO. The 2600MC Pro sports a 26 megapixel APS-C sensor and gives wider views of many targets. Thanks to its high-end features like low read noise, two-stage cooling and no amp glow, the 2600 gives consistently stunning views. When paired with the Samyang 135 the images are sharp and captured in high resolution. I also use the smaller but no less impressive 533MC Pro. Like its bigger brother the 533 can be cooled to help with noise control and it eliminates amp glow in your sub-exposures. These are really handy features to have in cameras as they can increase the quality of your sub-exposures and it really helps when it comes to stacking and post-processing. I also like the fact that the smaller 9 megapixel sensor is square shaped which is really fun when it comes to framing up certain targets with the Samyang 135. I recently did a review on the camera which I'll link above so go and check that out if you want to learn more about it. Connecting the Samyang 135 to these cameras is really easy thanks to some custom fittings from ZWO. I use this handy filter drawer attachment as I use an image with broadband and narrowband 2 inch filters depending on my target. This filter drawer has an integrated Canon EF mounting so it's a perfect fit with my Canon compatible Samyang lens. It's also made it the ideal width to help in achieving the required back focus for this imaging train. Back focus can be a pretty frustrating business at times, so but with this configuration it's pretty straightforward. There's also a helpful guide to connecting Canon lenses to this filter drawer system on ZWO's website which I'll link to below so you can go check that out for more information. By having the filter drawer attached in this way it's super easy to swap in and out my filters. For narrowband targets like emission nebulae I'll generally use my Optolong L-Extreme. 
Many emission nebulae are rich in hydrogen alpha and oxygen 3, and the L-extreme targets these emission lines at band passes of around 7 nanometers. 7 nanometers is wider than many other dual narrowband filters in the market, but when it comes to using a fast lens like the Samyang 135, this can be a real advantage. If I want to capture a target in broadband with more natural colors like galaxies, I'll swap in a light pollution filter like the IDAS D2. In some cases, if the conditions allow and there's no moon, I'll leave an image without a filter. So how do I currently use the Samyang 135? Well, as you can see here, I've custom fitted the lens to this cool 3D printed ring system, which I picked up from First Light Optics in the UK, but it's made from a great company in Canada called Astrodymium. I'll share links in the description below, so go check those out if you want more information. This is actually the second iteration of this build though, and I started off with a much simpler but less integrated model before switching. When using my Samyang 135 with my dedicated Astro cameras, I originally clamped the cameras in a ZW holder ring and then attached the camera. This worked perfectly fine and meant I was still free to add the integrated filter drawer, but it meant I was focusing with the manual focus ring in the lens. I did a short video on it last year, which I'll link up here, so go ahead and check that out if you want to see how I originally connected everything. As time went on, I really wanted to add an autofocus solution, so that led me on to the much better Astrodymium system. This new ring system is specifically made for the Samyang 135, and all of the components fit together perfectly. You can grab this in a variety of specifications, but I got the full ring system with the brackets and mounts for the ZWO EAF and the ASI Air. As I usually have limited imaging time due to our lovely Scottish weather, I need rigs that are fast and efficient to image with, and this outfit really helps with that, so let's take a closer look. The main feature of this system is obviously the Samyang 135 itself, and it's mounted in a sturdy pair of rings. On the top of the rings there's a handy guide scope rail, which I sometimes use to mount my ASI Air if I'm not guiding. There's also a side plate specifically for the ASI Air, but I find it easier just to pop in and out of the guide scope rail. I can easily change the aperture of the lens without taking it out of the ring, so this is a major time saver. I'm also able to secure my dew strips around the lens with no issue. One tip here is to try and get a thinner dew strip. I was previously using some pretty chunky ones which worked great, but in this configuration it's tricky to get them to fit properly. I picked up this fantastic replacement for Move Shoot Move and it's been a great performer. Its thinner profile means I can slot it into the ring system no problem without it getting in the way and it also has some integrated power control so I don't need to have it blasting at full whack when I don't need to. On the other side of the rings there's a housing for the ZWOEF which is really the secret sauce of this rig. The manual focus ring in the lens itself is great and has perfect tension to it but there's no real comparison between manually focusing and using an EAF. This is especially true when it comes to focus shifting which can occur throughout an imaging session when the temperature fluctuates throughout the night. The EAF can be set to refocus when this happens so it's a great addition to have but as I say this is really a first world problem. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the manual focus ring in this lens. The autofocus works via a timing belt and pulley system and this was really easy to fit thanks to the comprehensive and clear instructions from Astrodymium. They've really done a great job in this product so nice job folks. You can get an additional Vixen style dovetail bar to fit to the bottom of the rings but I prefer the beefier laws Mandy plates which can be overkill for a system like this but it's rock solid with no flexing and it's ultra stable. So let's head over to one of my mounts and you can see it all attached. The Samyang in its ring system sits nice and snug in the Laws Mandy clamp in my AZ EQ6 GT mount here and the pairings never let me down during an imaging session. The ring system also helps with cable management as it can keep all the components close together making a much tighter rig. Dangling cables can really mess with your guiding and sometimes throw off your balance so it's good to keep everything as tidy as possible. So that's my overview of my favourite astrophotography lens and I'll leave you now with some images that I've taken with the Samyang 135 over the years. Hope you can join me again for another astrophotography video from here in the UK. Take care of yourselves, be well, and clear skies to you all.